the setting that we're reading about is uh, where Jesus was speaking to the disciples about um, the end times in which the day we're living today. And uh, this was over 2,000 years ago. And and uh, Jesus was telling the disciples in uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 6, he says, As for these things which you behold, the days will come in the which there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now we understand that the folks, the temple has not been destroyed to that degree yet. So there's still got to be uh, the restoration of the temple again and the destruction of the temple to the point where it will never be recovered. It will never be restored again. It's one thing to have stones upon another, but when you can't find a stone to put upon another. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Uh, and they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And the time draweth near. Go you not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for there, these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these things, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before the kings and rulers for my namesake. And it shall turn unto you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And you shall be betrayed, both parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends, and some of you shall they cause to put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not one hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now, there are those out there call themselves preterists, that believe that all of this has already come to pass, I try to help them to understand that not to the degree that it's going to be. Yes, in part, Jerusalem was judged. Yes, these things have happened in part, folks. In part, it, Jerusalem, the temple, all of the things Jesus spoke of, these things happened in part, but not to the degree that we see in the scripture here. I ask the same individuals that believe in preterism, and they say to me, when I ask them about the heavens being on fire and the uh, elements burning with fervent heat and all these things, and they'll say, well, that's symbolic. Jesus wasn't saying that literally. He was talking about the rudiments being burned up, the, the ways of the world being burned up. No, he was talking literally, the heavens being on fire, melting with fervent heat. In fact, there's going to be new heaven and a new earth. But the thing I want us to focus on here, Luke 21, 19, is in your, possess, in your patience possess ye your souls. Patience doesn't come cheap, folks. And if you're going to have patience in this hour, you're going to have to acquire that 
through tribulation. Jesus said, in this world you shall have trouble. You can't avoid it. Stop trying to avoid it. Stop trying to avoid tribulation. Stop trying to wiggle your way out. Stop trying to worm your way around. Stop trying. Stop it. Stop it. Stop drawing back. Stop acting like a coward. You're going to have to go through tribulation if you're going to receive patience. You're not going to be anxious and in, in a hurry in this hour. It's because you're experiencing tribulation. It's not the sweetness of the Lord, folks, that gives us patience. It's the tribulations. Why do you think that the Bible says, consider the patience of Job? Are you listening? Why did God allow the devil to beat on Job? Because God wanted Job to learn patience. Folks, this is not something you can learn from a book. You can't even learn it from the Bible. You can't learn patience. Patience must be acquired. This idea today that you can better yourself. No, you can't. You can't better yourself. And you can't receive the things of the Lord by just reading the Bible. You've got to experience. Folks, do you understand? You have to experience the truth. You have to apply the truth. You have to live the truth. It's got to become part of you. You have to experience it. And patience is not something that you can receive or acquire without tribulation. So if you're one that's trying to avoid trouble, trying to avoid hard times, trying to avoid the attack of the enemy, trying to avoid the onslaught, trying to avoid uh, any confrontation or any negative, you know, you are going to miss what God has for you. Jesus could have avoided the cross but if he did it wouldn't have hurt him it would have hurt us we'd be lost we ought to thank God every day that Jesus Christ did not avoid that cross he set his face like a flint he said don't you know that I could presently have a legion of angels legions of angels here to deliver me he says but then how are the scriptures going to be fulfilled for thus it must be jesus came into this world for the purpose of going to the cross giving his life taking our place at calvary being crucified being crucified by cruel hands of sinners the ungodly He did not try to avoid tribulation. There's no place in Scripture where you can find that Jesus tried to avoid tribulation. And you and I, we don't go looking for trouble. Jesus didn't go looking for trouble. But when it comes your way, you don't turn around and run. You face it head on. Amen? You face it head on. Now, the price for patience, as we've discussed, is tribulation. But the reward, are you listening? The reward is having his character, having his nature. Where you become patient. That's something that's really hard to find in this day and age, to find somebody that really walks with God, doesn't try to get ahead of God, doesn't lag behind, 
but like Enoch, they walk with God. They're waiting patiently upon the Lord. There's something that God's people must understand, and if they don't understand this, they'll never, ever, ever, ever get it. God is not in a hurry. He's not in a hurry. I see people today trying to name a certain individual right now. Oh, he's got to be the Antichrist. It's got to be him. I give them scriptures. I try to help them to see that the Antichrist, it, this individual cannot be the Antichrist because, because he's married. He has a desire for a woman because he's got children. Uh, he does not fit the description in the Bible of, an, of the Antichrist. And yet they send me back messages saying, oh, well, you know, uh, we see that Michael Jackson was uh, was uh, married, uh, but he, he never had, uh, you know, he had never been physically with this woman that he was married to because he didn't desire a woman. That's a stretch. I would call that a stretch um, of your imagination. Um I believe, as I've told you in the previous messages, that the church at large, that the people, the world, everybody's getting anxious, getting in a hurry. Um, I remember hearing a testimony of this man that I believe he was maybe a hundred or a little bit older. Uh, and uh, he, he just... One day he just realized, he said, the world went and got themselves in a hurry. Because he was used to the, you know, the good times. Life when it was slow in the sense that you enjoyed the day, you know. I can't think of the last time, folks, that I really took the time to go outside and look up at the sky and, and this is to my shame, but I can't remember the last time that I really took the time to look at the stars. It's been years. I mean, literally years since I've looked up at the stars, since I've looked at God's creation around me, since I've actually taken the time. You know, I thank God that I do take the time, that when I'm outside, I do take the time to really take in that fresh air. But... Think about it, folks. When's the last time you really, really, genuinely, really took, took the time to enjoy the beauty of creation around you? When's the last time? Now, the world worships it. They worship creation. But I'm talking about with a balance and... and having a right attitude. You don't put creation before God, but you, you're thankful. You're thankful for what God created. You got to understand, He created the earth for us. He created the, the trees, the mountains, and all these things that give off oxygen. And he, God created these things for His creation, for His people. It wasn't the other way around. And today they're trying to call the earth mother and they're calling the son their brother and that time is their father it's crazy so crazy father time and Horus is supposed to be the son of God and uh, the earth is supposed to be the mother crazy but that's what they believe Father time. And uh, that's what the pyramid and the the uh, sundial, uh, the, the up, ups, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The uh, male phallus there. The sundial. The pyramid, all of that. That all has to do with time. When the uh, shadow of the sundial, like the, the sundial was like an hour hand. And when the sun was cast upon the sundial, working with the pyramid, the point of the pyramid, 
The shadow on the ground would tell them what time of the day it was. Father Time. So, they worship the sun, and they worship the earth, and they worship the planets. But there's nothing wrong with enjoying those things, folks. Amen? Nothing wrong with enjoying creation, enjoying the wonderful, beautiful waterfalls, streams. God wants us to enjoy those things. But they've got to stay in their place. We never worship those things. We don't worship the earth. We don't worship the stars. We don't worship the planets. We don't worship people. We don't worship animals. We don't worship anything. We have no other gods before the great God of heaven. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's still a command today. God is a jealous God. Folks, I haven't found very many people that can have, have enough patience to even enjoy to even enjoy their their vacation. To even enjoy vacation. Everybody's a, such in a hurry. I mean, I have learned that I do pretty good until I get a thought in my mind that I got to go somewhere or do something. Then I start to get a little anxious. And I've learned that thoughts can make us anxious. I mean, right now, I am just completely at peace and just resting in the Lord, and I'm not in a hurry. Uh, but a certain thought, or a phone call, or a text that somebody's in trouble, or, or an appointment, or something like that in nature, gets you in a hurry. Well, we can't be controlled. Amen? We can't allow uh, thoughts, situations, to control us. We must become disciplined. To we're only led by the Spirit of God. We can't be moved by our emotions. We can't be purpose-driven. Are you listening, folks? We cannot be driven or moved or led by feelings and thoughts. We must be led only by the Holy Ghost. Only by the Spirit of God. Many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And there were times where Jesus was not just led, there were times where Jesus was driven of the Spirit. Now, I don't mind being driven as long as it's the Holy Ghost driving me. Because even when He drives you, it's gentle. But there's a difference between when He drives you and when He's leading you. And you learn those things as you go along. You learn the difference in how the Spirit of God moves. But again, this, uh, this idea of patience is not something that you can learn. It's something you must acquire. Somebody can't give it to you either. You can't receive it by rubbing shoulders. You can't receive it by watching someone else's life. You must experience tribulation. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, it's better, it's better to know that tribulation is part of God's will for your life than to not think that tribulation is part of your life. And then when it comes, you're not ready. You're not prepared for it. Because as long as you think that tribulation is not of God, and, and God would not allow tribulation to come your way. I'm not saying God is the one that, uh, that sends the tribulation, or he's the one that's making the tribulation or the trouble in your life. What I'm saying is he allows it. 
he allows it. So if you're being faithful to the Lord and you're going through hard times, you want to thank God. Thank God. It's like the Lord said about Job. Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? That was a great honor. Job didn't know anything about what the about the deal that God made with the, uh, you know, the business deal that God had made with the devil. Job didn't know about that. He didn't need to know about it. And you and I don't need to know about it. All we need to know is that God is in control. Job was being purified. Amen? And you and I are being purified to the point where we have no trust in anything else other than in God when it's all said and done at the end of the day. You cannot trust in people. You can't trust in things. You must only have your trust in God. And that's what Jesus said to Peter. He said, Peter, I've prayed for you that when you are converted, you'll strengthen your brethren. Jesus said to Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith does not fail. How many know that that's what God is after in our life? No confidence in the flesh. Unfortunately, that comes through great tribulation, or at least through tribulation. Comes through trouble. Trouble's coming your way, whether you like it or not. And it'd be better for you to be forewarned so you can be forearmed than to stick your head in the sand and say, oh, it's, no. It's going to be easy. It's going to be simple. And then not, not get ready, not prepare. I'm sharing this message with you so that you will prepare, so you will get ready for the trouble, for the tr tribulation that's coming your way. So you'll be strong and be able to withstand and be able to stand for Jesus and keep a right attitude and not be overcome but to overcome in the trial. Paul the Apostle said, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Not outside the trouble, not outside of tribulation. He said, in all these things we are more than conquerors. God bless you.